Hey guys, today I'm taking your questions on everything from drunken composting to spanking your tomatoes and even more, so stick around. Welcome to my very first Q&A video session here on YouTube. Now, I've been on for a couple of years, but I've never done this, and I think that it's high time that I did. If you'd like to get involved in future question and answer videos, simply put your comments down below in the comments section below this video, and I may use them in the future. Since this is YouTube, you could video your questions and upload it, send me a link to it, and then I'll download it, and I may incorporate that into a future video as well. So think about doing that, and you can be on the channel with me here. All right, so let's get rocking and rolling. The first uh, question is about drunken composting, and this comes from Chastity. Uh, she says that she really likes it because she's making compost and was wanting to find a faster way to do it with drunken composting. You can turn your grass into usable garden soil in, in as little as 10 to 14 days. Um, she wants to know if she needs the green grass, and the answer is yes. This is a key ingredient to drunken composting because that green grass as it's breaking down heats up and that's what speeds the process up and it helps break down your kitchen scraps and your leaves and it really gets it to rocking and rolling so that is a critical element if you want it to get done fast compost is going to happen you know you don't have to have a magic elixir to make it happen but it nature will do it pretty slowly but you can supercharge it by using the the beer the cola and the ammonia tonic and those items are pre-mixed. She also wanted to know about using uh, yeast and sugar and mix that with ammonia and just use that. I've never done it any other way than the way I specify in the video using the beer and the cola that are in cans and then the eight ounces of ammonia. Um, and ammonia, you know, people talk about organicness. Ammonia falls in the rain. It's NH3. It's a chemical compound. Uh, if you don't want ammonia in your garden, then you need to find a way to stop thunderstorms from <laughs> falling on your garden because <laughs> it's just a normal, a normal element that is actually in the rain. That's why things green up after a thunderstorm because of the nitrogen that's in the ammonia. And the ammonia that you use in the tonic is actually replacing the nitrogen that gets robbed <laughs> during that composting process. Another thing Chastity wants to know about is uh, composting dry pine straw, uh, the pine needles that you might get off of pine trees. And yes, you can compost that, but there's a couple of things you need to understand. First of all, these pine needles will have oil on them and it'll, it's going to take a long time for that stuff to break down. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to make your compost pile a bit more acidic. So you need to be aware of that because if you had a massive amount of pine straw all at once in there, you're going to have a much higher acidity level to your compost, so keep that in mind. Now Patty Miller writes and says, Hi, I'm new at this. I was wondering if horse manure could be added with the grass and leaves to make the compost with the tonic. And my answer to that is you betcha. Uh, horse manure and cow manure, very good items to use. Now if you use chicken manure, that is considered a hot manure, and it's going to take a lot longer to break down. It's, got, it's very high in nitrogen. Uh, if you tried to apply that to your garden after 10 to 14 days, you would very, very likely burn your plants. But you're okay with the horse and cow manure. You just got to make sure you got enough green grass uh, in order to heat that stuff up because any seeds that the animals may have eaten need to break down. Now our next question comes from Daylin, and she wants to know uh, if I save the seeds to my fruits and vegetables, at the end of the season, uh, and uh, if so, for what items? Well, I like to save my tomato seeds that are heirloom, uh, also my pepper seeds from the bell peppers and the jalapenos and things like that. You can also save cucumber seeds. A lot of these seeds like that and like the, uh, the peppers, you can simply take and scrape out, put them out on a, a paper towel and let them dry out. And once they're nice and dry, pop them in a uh, mason jar and you can save them that way or you could put them in an envelope and stick them like in the, the crisper of your refrigerator and do it that way. When it comes to tomatoes, I've actually got a video on how to save uh, your heirloom seed tomatoes. Now, in this video, I uh, mistakenly uh, spoke about uh, Better Boys being heirlooms. They're not. Uh, if you try to save your hybrid tomato seeds, 
you may not get germination on them or you may get something totally different. Uh, the manufacturers tend to design those to where you can't really save those seeds that way you have to buy from them again the following season. So you don't really don't want to save those kind of seeds but if you have heirloom vegetables then absolutely save those seeds. The next question comes from Regina Bradshaw and she wants to know about problems she's having with uh, birds. Now she loves the red Christmas ball idea and yes it really does work. When you grow your tomatoes when they're when they first come on and they're green take red Christmas balls. Use plastic ones not grass ones just in case you know because glass ones can break. But hang them on your tomato plants or on the cages and birds will come in and they'll peck on those red balls. That didn't sound right did it? They'll peck on the <laughs> red Christmas ornaments and then uh, once they realize there's nothing to it, they tend to leave your other fruit alone, especially when they begin to ripen and turn red. She's having a problem with her grapes though and the birds are messing with their grapes. My best recommendation for that is to get bird netting. And you can get bird netting uh, on Amazon, you can find it online, but you can also find it you know, at your big box garden centers like Home Depot. Sometimes Walmart will have it or China Mart. Um, but what I would do is I would put that over the plants themselves and I would cut a slit in the bird netting. But once you cut that slit in the netting, then you can take paper binders just like this one and you can use that to secure your netting. You could also use uh, uh, clothespins if you wanted, but that will keep the netting secure and but you'll be able to get in and get to your plants, harvest them and what have you using those. Now we have a question for Mrs. Reaganite. DA wants to know, okay, I've waited a year to ask, so I know you know. Did the oversized okra get soft enough to enjoy, or was it tough? In Mrs. Reaganite's video, Pickling Okra Granny's Way. You guys are the best. One great thing about Mrs. Reaganite, she gets to the point with no babbling antics. We all love his antics, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mrs. Reaganite, what do you say? Well, it turned out great. Now, the really, really large ones were a little bit too tough, but all of the others were great. It was eaten in a, probably a month. All right, <laughs> next question. Gianluca writes to say, I really like your shirt. Well, thank you, Gianluca. You can also get one also. We've got all kinds of neat gardening shirts over at our spread shirt shop, uh, Reaganite 71 shop. Uh, we've got shirts on gardening, tomatoes, veggies, peppers, even melons. One that says, I heart melons. Perfect. <laughs> well, did I mention we have coffee cups also? The good news is, is that all of the proceeds from the shirts, the coffee mugs and things like that go to a very, very good cause. It helps us pay our water bill for the garden. <laughs> Fillmore wants to know when it comes to the drunken composting tonic and specifically the ammonia, is it measured in ounces or fluid ounces? And also, could I give the measurement in milliliters? Well, it's fluid ounces and no. Just go to Google and type in fluid ounces to milliliters and they'll do the conversion for you. Now, Mean Green Fan has a very important question, especially at this time of the year when everything's coming off in the garden. Do you have a link to your salsa recipe? Why, yes. Yes, I do. Any of these links that you see rolling next to me, by the way, you'll be able to find them down in the description section uh, below the video. If uh, you're not on a laptop and you don't have clickable links, you'll find them down there. And when it comes to the salsa video, just keep in mind it was the first year that I was filming on YouTube. It's a bit long, but believe me, it's worth it when it comes to fire roasted salsa that is oh so good. <laughs> How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine wants to know, when it comes to building a metal conduit garden trellis, can you also do it with PVC pipe? You can, but the problem you're going to run into with PVC pipe is the bend, because that plastic is so, especially on longer runs, it is so 
fragile and, and flexible. If you put any kind of weight on it at all, especially if it's far out from the uh, corner joints, it's going to sag on you like crazy and it could eventually pop out unless you glue it up. But even if you glue it up, you're going to have sag right in the middle. So you want to avoid that. That's why the metal conduit is the best because it will last you, well, probably your entire gardening lifetime. The only thing you'll have to do is change out the netting. And if you don't want to do netting by hand like I show in the video, then you can just buy the trellis netting at Walmart. It's like five bucks and you get like five foot by 15 feet of it. So it's much better to do it that way. So there you go, Jasmine. Will you, will you, will I'll take care of that for you. I'll take care of it Give for it you. Back. I'll take care Give of it. it. Back. Give it back. Tim Huffman would like to know, Reaganite 71, how's your shade fabric doing after last season? I might try it in my garden here in Florida, but I'd like to know how long the uh, fabric lasts in the summertime. Well, Tim, I'll tell you, it did really well, and I probably could have carried it over and used it the next season, but I have such a gigantic roll of the stuff, I've probably got enough for the next five or six seasons, and that includes rolling some out for frost protection, you know, in the early spring, and also using it as a germination blanket, and when your seedlings are tender, especially things that like to get eaten up by, you know, cabbage worms and things like that, you can keep it over your plants and give them an extra uh, layer of protection from those things coming in and eating them up. So between all of that and using it for shade cloth, it has been outstanding and it's been well worth the money. Pat's fan 1284 says, your thermometer is amazing. Where did you get it? Well, I've got a garden thermometer uh, that's a remote thermometer and it's really, really dandy. I've got the main sensor out in the garden and this stays inside and it gives me a constant uh, check on temperature, humidity, all that good stuff. Also what the high was for the day and the low. And got it for under $30 at Wally World. Good old China Mart. Finally, Kyle wants to know, who's back there snoring in my last video? Well, you know, I wanted to say it was Mrs. Reaganite, but she gave me a look of death when I suggested that. The fact of the matter is, I got a teenager that likes playing Xbox late at night, and he was in the next room <laughs> snoring, and the shotgun microphone that I have on this camera is really good. <laughs> Not only did it record me, it recorded what was behind me. The other question he had is, can we buy jars of your salsa? Well, I don't have a production facility big enough for that. If you own a production facility and the wherewithal, and you'd like to, uh, uh, work out a deal for the salsa, just send me a message. <laughs> now when it comes to the salsa, you can win a jar though, because right now we're having our 15,000 plus subscriber giveaway, and it involves giving away a jar of salsa to two lucky viewers. All you have to do is send us a postcard in the mail, the old fashioned way, slap a stamp on it, and send it to Reaganite 71, 7924 Hermitage Drive, Fort Smith, Arkansas, 72908, and you will be in the running with all these other folks to win a jar of salsa. We're going to do the drawing on August 15th, 24, or correction, entries must be received by August 15th, 2014. We're going to draw on Saturday, August 16th, and then we'll get the video uploaded on it. And there's no cost to enter. Just send us a postcard. you got to pay for a stamp. We'll handle shipping and everything else. I hope you win. Good luck to you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed making it, and I know Mrs. Reaganite did as well. Until next time, this is Reaganite71. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. We'll see you next time.